Hello, Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com, 12.30 Eastern Time on October the 4th, 2016. Let's take a look at the very latest with Hurricane Matthew, the infrared wider shot of the western Atlantic Basin here. You see the size of the hurricane pretty respectable, approaching the western tip of Haiti here, the Tiburon Peninsula as it were. And we've gone over this a lot already. Very, very dangerous situation unfolding down there. Much better news, of course, for Jamaica, as I outlined earlier today. And then next up, of course, the western part of Haiti here, the peninsula, and then up here towards the passage, southeast Cuba, and then into the Bahamas will be next. And it is going to be a rough couple of days for this area, to say the least. Beyond the Caribbean, there is obviously a great deal of interest as to where this will end up. And we don't know the final outcome of that just yet. But this is the very latest GFS run it's actually still rendering out on the NCEP site and uh, elsewhere throughout the web. And I want to show you what it shows. Uh, this is the 500 millibar pattern. Again, there's the hurricane right there. Very well represented in the 500 millibar field at the initial hour. This is that little trough that gets mentioned every once in a while in the discussion. And then here's the outline of that big old ridge of high pressure. Uh, this is another little system that's trying to develop 98L probably not enough influence to lure Matthew away and turn it out to sea. This is just not strong enough. So let's go through the frames here. I'm going to start the animation and I'll show you what happens. This moves off to the northeast a little bit, kind of zigging and zagging overall, then across southeastern Cuba into the Bahamas from there, moving up through the central Bahamas where Joaquin was last year, very close to Nassau, west of the Abacos, extremely close maybe only a dozen miles or so, 20 miles off the coast of Florida, and then up into Charleston, South Carolina is what it looks like here in the overnight hours, Friday into Saturday, and then by day five, sitting over eastern North Carolina somewhere near New Bern or Washington. Look at that track there. That's the outline as I traced it. Very, very interesting scenario setting up. You notice that the ridge builds in over the top of this system forcing it off to the west. I was concerned about this a couple of days ago. When I first noticed this, I think two days ago, I was wondering, will this be the start of more ridging to allow this system to come in much closer to the United States? And I think now we are starting to see the answer to that question. For you folks down in southeast Florida, almost a certainty that you will be under some kind of a watch tomorrow as this approaches. Look how close this gets and you've got some big population centers down here, probably far enough away from Miami and Fort Lauderdale, but up towards West Palm Beach, and then up here towards New Smyrna Beach, uh, the Space Coast, uh, areas where Francis and Jean in 2004 impacted uh, many years ago now. And um, this is going to get really, really close, especially up close to Melbourne, and uh, again, New Smyrna, and that's hard to say that name. And wow, I mean, the core, the western core of the hurricane in this run, and this is only about 78 hours out. So this would be uh, in the overnight hours. Why is it? It always have to be overnight. Ah, I tell you. Um, so around 2 a.m. on Friday, so Thursday night into Friday, and then look at that ridge outlined up there. It kind of looks like that ghost icon for Snapchat, doesn't it? I'm not even going to make any jokes about it because this is pretty darn serious. But you can see the ridge as well as I can, tilted back here, aiming this right at the coast there. And then maybe the low country of South Carolina, if this comes off a little earlier, it could cut across eastern North Carolina without touching the, uh, the Palmetto State. So we shall see what we shall see. But I'm telling you, from here on out, the stakes are going to grow higher and higher as officials across the Florida East Coast and Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina start need starting to need to make decisions pretty soon. Storm surge, high wind, oh, all the you know the swells coming in, the beach erosion, not a good scenario setting up. And there are different festivals this weekend. I know in Wilmington, North Carolina, it's River Fest as an example. That'll probably have to be moved, postponed, canceled, what have you. And it was also ironically postponed last year due to Joaquin's sort of offshoot uh, rain, that big rain event. We all remember that well. So there is a lot, a lot at stake here. I'll get more into those details tomorrow. 
That is the very latest look at what's going on with Matthew. Our hopes and prayers will certainly be, for what it's worth, with the people in Haiti especially, and eastern Cuba as well, and then the Bahamas. Everybody hang tight. Uh, Probably not much communication down there in Haiti, unfortunately, and we'll just wait and see what happens. Keep our fingers crossed that it won't be too bad, but I think we know that the potential is certainly there for an undesirable amount of, uh, of damage and unfortunate loss of life. I mean, you know these things are inevitable, unfortunately, from time to time. In any case, that's it from me for this evening. I'm going to try to get some sleep, and I'll be back with you early tomorrow morning. The next update will be on by 9 a.m. Eastern Time, so be sure to check uh, YouTube. And, uh, of course, in fact, let me get that slide up there. Make sure you remember, subscribe on YouTube. And uh, we have our app. There's our kitty code slide. We do some stuff for Hurricane Pro and HD. You can tell it's late. So, yeah, Hurricane Track on Twitter, the app Hurricane Impact. Check that video section, and again, by 9 a.m. tomorrow. All right? I'm off. I'm Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, trying to get some sleep. Hopefully, if I can, you do the same. If you're on the East Coast, south of Hatteras, you're going to need it. And I'll talk to you again in less than nine hours.